In the 90s space opera Babylon 5, telepaths send thoughts directly into other people's minds. While current technology can't yet put thoughts into someone's head, we are making surprising progress at interpreting the thoughts that come out. In a previous episode of AI Talks, we saw how an artificial intelligence system enabled paralyzed individuals to text out messages. Two teams of scientists asked paralyzed patients to attempt to write characters or to speak words. They then taught artificial recurrent neural networks to convert the resulting brain signals into text. Frustratingly, when the verbally impaired patient attempted to speak isolated words, the artificial neural network was only able to identify the correct word not quite half the time. Fortunately, language does not consist of isolated words. In this episode, AI talks in full sentences. We'll harness the sequential structure of language and cut the number of word errors in half. Language has structure. But since language is spoken and written in time, all of that structure ends up smushed down into a linear sequence of words. The fundamental fact that language is sequential shapes many techniques from natural language processing, including the technique that helps have the number of errors in the brain-to-text systems, the turby decoding of hidden Markov models. I have two children in college, out of state, a junior and a freshman. Each time one of my kids calls, it's my job as a parent to discern their emotional state from their complaints about a daunting homework assignment, smiles over a dance they went to, or cooing about a kitten that lives next door. In addition to their current words and tone of voice, I also remember the last time that we spoke, when they had an exciting concert coming up, or when a friend was struggling with classes. A hidden Markov model, or HMM, is a type of mathematical model designed to better predict and interpret sequences of observations, such as the observed sequences of sentences my children produce during our phone conversations, or the observed sequences of brain signals that the paralyzed individuals produce when they attempt to speak or write. When you model an observation sequence with an HMM, you assume that the underlying system has an unobserved internal state that varies over time. At any given moment, the HMM is in one of a finite number of possible states. But since that state cannot be directly observed, we must instead infer the model state indirectly from the observable outputs. At each time step, an HMM transitions from a starting state to an ending state, and then emits an observable output. Each transition between states is assigned a probability of occurring, and similarly, each state contains a probability distribution over the possible outputs. Crucially, it is possible for different states to emit the same outputs, so there is no way to know for sure the true underlying state of the system. While my son and daughter's true emotional state is hidden from me, by observing their words and manner of speaking and by tracking their past emotional state, I build up an internal model of my best guess at how they're doing both now and in the past, and how their emotional state is likely to evolve in the future. Similarly, while a brain-to-text interface cannot directly observe the word that a patient is attempting to speak or write, we know both the current and the past emissions from the brain and can build an HMM that describes the sequence of words or characters that would have been most likely to produce the observed brain signals. At this point, the team that converted brain signals into handwritten characters faced a modeling choice. They could either build an HMM where the states represented individual characters, or they could build an HMM where the states represent words. 
One way to use words as states when modeling a character sequence is to think of each word state as itself built up out of substates. Each substate represents a single character, and each substate of a word will always transition to the next character in that word with a probability of one. Many speech recognition systems use this word substate trick, and so the handwriting team chose the more established modeling technique, treating words as the primary HMM states. There are two tasks we need to solve with any HMM. We need to estimate the model's free parameters, the transition and emission probabilities, and once we have found solid estimates for those parameters, we need to use them to identify the most likely state sequence. When converting brain signals into text, since the states are the words that the paralyzed patient is attempting to produce, the transition probabilities are the likelihood that one word follows another. The scientists estimated these word transition probabilities by counting. Each team collected a number of documents into a body or corpus of text. They then counted how many times word A occurred in the corpus and how many times word B followed word A. Dividing these two counts, you arrive at an estimate for the probability that word B will follow word A. I'm skimming over some statistical tricks that help improve the raw word transition probabilities, but to a first approximation, the state transition probabilities are literally just word counts. It's a bit trickier to estimate the HMM's emission probabilities. What we need is an estimate of the probability that the HMM emits a particular brain signal when in the state corresponding to a particular word. While neither team has probability estimates of a brain signal given a word, they do have estimates of the probability of a word given a brain signal. As we saw in part one, both teams built artificial neural networks specifically designed to calculate the probability of a word or character given a brain signal. To get word probabilities from probabilities of individual characters, the scientists assumed that each character is independent of the others. They clearly aren't, but will assume independence anyway. If characters were independent, then the probability of a sequence of characters would simply be the product of the probabilities of each character. In general, the probability of A given B does not equal the probability of B given A. The probability that a crow is a bird is one. But the probability that any random bird is a crow is much, much smaller. Nevertheless, if we assume that all possible neural signals are equally likely, they're not, but we'll assume they are anyway, then the probability of a brain signal given a word would equal the probability of a word given the brain signal. And we have an estimate of the emission probabilities from each word state. Both teams abused their probability estimates in exactly this way. So now that we have an HMM with estimates for all three parameters, how do we use this model to predict the most likely sequence of words? The answer is the Viterbi algorithm a clever application of dynamic programming, a class of algorithm where a final calculation is derived by computing, saving, and reusing intermediate results. Named after Andrew Viterbi, dynamic programming for HMMs was in reality independently discovered by several people in the late 1960s. The Viterbi algorithm exploits the fact that the only variable that affects the probability of being in a particular state at the next time step is the probability of the model being in the current state at the current time step. While there are many different state sequence paths that the HMM could have taken to arrive at a particular state at the current time step, the individual probabilities of these many different possible past paths are irrelevant to the calculation. Similarly, because the only variable that affects the probability of observing a particular output is the state of the HMM at this time step, 
the different possible paths that the HMM could have taken to arrive at a particular state are again irrelevant. For a given sequence of observations, to calculate the probability of the most likely state path through the hidden Markov model, we only need to keep track of one best path per HMM state. Specifically, for each time step and each HMM state, we calculate the single most likely state path that leads to the state at that time step. Let's focus on a particular time step, which we'll call t, and state, which we'll call b. Of the many different state sequences that the HMM could have taken to arrive at state b, there will be one that will have the highest probability of emitting the observed observations up through time t. Suppose we have somehow already magically calculated the probability of this best path. Given the probability, of a path arriving at state b at time step t, it is straightforward to calculate the probability that that path will continue on to state c in the next time step. Simply multiply the probability of arriving at state b at time t by the probability of transitioning from b to c, and then multiply that product by the probability that state c would emit the observation that was seen at time step t plus 1. If, in addition to having already calculated for time step t the probability of the best path to state b, we have also similarly calculated for time step t the probability of the best path that ends in state a, and the best path that ends in state c, and so on, then we can now calculate the probability of the best possible path to state c at time step t plus 1 simply calculate the probability of extending the best path that ended in A onto C, the probability of extending the best path that ended in B onto C, the probability of continuing the best path to C onto C again, etc. One of these will have the highest probability. Repeating this process, we can calculate the probability of the best path not only to state C, but to each separate state, at time step t plus 1, and now that we have magically calculated the probabilities of the best path to each state at time step t plus 1, we can move on to calculating the best path to each state for time step t plus 2. When we reach the end of the observation sequence, we will have calculated the probability of the best state path through the entire HMM graph, and we can simply read off the words that correspond to each state in that best path. With the aid of the Viterbi algorithm, the team that mapped brain signals to full words halved the number of errors their system made. Where individual words were misrecognized 53% of the time, words decoded as Viterbi sequences in a hidden Markov model were misrecognized at a rate of just 26%. Perhaps even more surprising, the team that decoded individual characters also saw a similar strong relative improvement in performance, despite starting from an already impressive accuracy. Their error rate at identifying individual characters started at 6%, but after building an HMM to recognize sequences of characters, their errors dropped in half as well, to just 3%. Amazing! Almost like telepathy, we can use technology and leverage language's sequential structure to read and understand people's thoughts. Come join my Discord server, where the AI Talks community discusses a range of topics in AI and NLP. To join me on Discord, simply sign up at the AI Talks Ko-fi page, where a subscription at any level gives you access. Until I can greet you personally on Discord, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video, when AI talks. <laughs>